What's up, bros? Parker Parallel here, here to talk to you about some parallel lines. Let's first start with some parallel lines and transversals. I remember yesterday I was doing the barrel on the outside and I got it down the line and I was totally nose to the toes if you touch my drift. First thing we're gonna talk about are parallel lines. Those are two coplanar lines that have the same slope and do not intersect. So coplanar just means they lie on the same plane. Here you can see we have two lines that are both on the coordinate plane, therefore they are on the same plane, they're coplanar, and they have the same slope. They're in slope intercept form, if you remember what that is, y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, and each of these has a slope of two, therefore they are parallel lines. They will never intersect. The next vocabulary term is a transversal. That's a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at two different points. So you can see we have our coplanar lines in black right here, and our transversal is in red. This transversal is a line that intersects the two coplanar lines at two different points. This transversal is transversing, it's crossing through the two lines. Now skew lines would be two lines that do not intersect and are not coplanar. So if you're looking at this figure down here, you can see that this line up here exists in plane A and is traveling in these two directions, whereas this line down here exists within plane B and is traveling in two different directions than this line up here. Therefore, they are skew. I want you to think about this though. Two parallel lines, even if they exist on two separate planes, if they are parallel to one another, they can exist within the same plane. You would be able to draw a plane going through those two parallel lines. So two parallel lines will never be skew. Even if they're drawn on separate planes, if they're traveling in the exact same direction, they are parallel and they can be drawn on the same plane. Skew lines do not intersect and are not coplanar. They're on different planes and they are not parallel. Next, we have parallel planes. Those are planes that do not intersect. So this is pretty straightforward. We have planes down here, A, B, and C, and each of them are parallel to one another. It means that one never crosses through or intersects the other. They are parallel to one another. They are exactly in line with one another. Therefore, they are parallel planes. Now let's talk about two lines being cut by a transversal. So when two lines, like here, line L and line M, are cut by a transversal, in this case line T, special angles are created. And I want you to go through these with me because these are gonna become very important in this chapter. So interior angles would be angles that lie in the region between lines L and M. Lines L and M create an interior and an exterior. So the angles that would lie on the interior of lines L and M would be all the angles in here. It would be angle eight and angle three and angle seven and angle two. Those would be considered interior angles because they're on the inside of lines L and M. Exterior angles then would be angles that lie outside of lines L and M. So if these in here would be the interior angles, then the exterior angles would be the ones outside of lines L and M. So in this case, angle five, angle six, angle four, and angle one would be considered your exterior angles. The next type of angles formed by two lines being cut by a transversal would be alternate interior angles. Those would be non-adjacent interior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal T. So let's break this down. They're non-adjacent, so they can't be right next to each other, like eight and three. They're interior angles, so they're inside these two lines, L and M, and they lie on opposite sides of the transversal. So one's gonna be on this side, one's gonna be on this side. So two alternate interior angles would be angles three and seven. They are not adjacent, they're not right next to each other. They're on opposite sides of the transversal, so they're alternate and they're inside the two lines, they're interior. Same thing with angles eight and two. They're non-adjacent, they're not right next to each other. They're on opposite sides of the transversal, they're alternate, and they're inside the two parallel lines, they're interior. So those would be your alternate interior angles, three and seven, and eight and two. The next type of angles formed by two lines being cut by a transversal would be alternate exterior angles. Those would be non-adjacent exterior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal T. So again, non-adjacent means they can't be right next to each other, like five and six. They're exterior angles, meaning they lie on the outside of our two lines, L and M, and they are on opposite sides of the transversal T. So one's gonna be on this side, one's gonna be on this side. So two of our alternate exterior angles would be angles five and one. They are not adjacent, they're not next to each other. They're on opposite sides of the transversal, they're alternate, and they're exterior, they're on the outside of the two lines. 
Same thing with angles six and four. They are not adjacent. They're not right next to each other. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. They're alternate. And they're on the outside of the two lines. They're exterior. Therefore, these are alternate exterior angles. The next type of angles formed by two lines being cut by a transversal would be corresponding angles. Those are non-adjacent angles that lie on the same side of the transversal T and on the same side of lines M and L. So what does that mean? Well, again, non-adjacent, they can't be right next to each other. They lie on the same side of the transversal T. So two corresponding angles would be on the same side of the transversal. They are also on the same side of lines M and L. Well, what does that mean? Well, if one angle is above M, then its corresponding angle would be above L, and it would be on the same side of the transversal. So let's look at some corresponding angles. So angles five and eight would be considered corresponding angles because they're non-adjacent, they're not right next to each other, they're on the same side of the transversal, they're both on the left side of the transversal T, and they're both on the same side of lines M and L. Angle five is below line M, and angle eight is also below line L, so therefore they are corresponding angles. Angles six and three are also corresponding angles. They are non-adjacent, they're not right next to each other. They lie on the same side of transversal T, they're both on the right side, and they're on the same side of lines M and L. Angle six is below line M, and angle three is below line L, therefore they are corresponding angles. Angles seven and four are also corresponding angles. They are non-adjacent, they're not right next to each other. They lie on the same side of our transversal T, they're both on the left side, and they're both on the same side of lines M and L. Angle seven is above line M, and angle four is above line L. Same thing with angles two and one. Angles two and one, they're non-adjacent, they're not next to each other. They're on the right side of the transversal, and they are both on the same side of lines M and L. Angle two is above line M, angle one is above line L. Therefore, they are corresponding angles. The last set of angles formed by two lines being cut by a transversal that we're gonna talk about are consecutive or same side interior angles. Those would be interior angles that lie on the same side of the transversal T. So this is pretty straightforward. Consecutive interior angles, we want interior angles, so inside the two lines, so we're looking in here, and we want them to be on the same side of the transversal. So they would both be on the left side or the right side. So those would be angles seven and eight. Those would be considered consecutive or same side interior angles because they're on the same side of the transversal and they're inside the two lines. So they're consecutive or same side interior angles. Same thing with angles two and three. They're on the same side of the transversal and they're both inside the two lines. Therefore, they're consecutive interior angles. Now you know everything, so it's example time. Now example one says use the figure below to find the following. So we want a plane parallel to plane ABEH. So where is plane ABEH? That would be this left side of the box. So we want a plane that's parallel to that, meaning a plane that will never intersect it, even if it continues on in every direction. So we're looking for then the right side of the box, right? This side of the box over here would be parallel to plane ABEH. So plane DCFG would be parallel to plane ABEH. H. Now we want segments parallel to segment EF. So where's segment EF? Segment EF would be right here. So we're looking for a segment that even if it continued on in both directions forever would never intersect segment EF even if that were to continue on forever. So we would be looking at segment HG, right? Segment HG, even if it continued on forever, would never intersect with segment EF, even if that continued on forever. Same thing with segment BC. That would also be parallel to segment EF. And the last one I see would be segment AD. That would be also parallel to segment EF. Even though AD looks to be on a different plane than segment EF, that's okay because they have the same orientation, meaning that you could technically draw a plane that goes through segment AD and EF. If you were to draw a plane diagonally through this box, you could create a plane that went through both of these figures. So they would technically be parallel and never intersect with one another. So those would be the segments that are parallel to segment EF. Segment skew to segment BE. So where is segment BE? Segment BE is right here. So we want segments that are skew to segment BE. Now remember, skew means they have to be on different planes. They can't be on the same plane, otherwise they would technically intersect. So we're looking for two segments that even if they continued on forever, would never intersect with one another, and they're on different planes. So if segment BE is right here, a segment that would be on a different plane and never intersect with segment BE, even 
even if it went on forever, would be segment AD. Even if I continued that on forever, it would never intersect with segment BE, the, the little back corner of the box over here. Same thing with segment HG. That would also never intersect with segment BE, and it's on a different plane. Same thing with segment DC and segment FG. Those would all not intersect with segment BE, even if you continued all of them on forever. Segments that intersect segment AB. So segment AB would be right here. So segments that intersect this segment, that's actually pretty easy. All you're looking for in this figure is just a segment that shares one endpoint with segment AB. That means they connect, they intersect with one another. So that would be segment AH that intersects with segment AB at point A. Segment BE intersects with segment AB at point B. Segment BC intersects with segment AB at point B. And segment AD intersects with segment AB at point A. So those segments would all intersect with segment AB. Time to get some gnarly tubes. It's a U-try. Okay, doing the same thing with a new figure. We want to first find a plane parallel to plane J, N, K. So where's plane J, N, K? Oh, that's this triangular plane in the front of our figure right here. So we want a plane that's parallel to that. Well, that would be the triangle in the back, right? That triangle, this triangular plane in the back would be parallel to this triangle. Even if they went on forever in every direction, they would never intersect with one another. So plane, M-O-L, is parallel to plane J, N, K. Now we want segments parallel to segment NO. Where segment NO? Segment NO is right here. So segments that would be parallel to this, meaning that even if they went on forever, they would never intersect, but they have the same orientation, you could draw a plane through them, would be segments JM and KL. Both of those have the same orientation as segment NO. You could draw a plane through both of them, but they would never intersect. So segments JM and KL would be parallel to segment NO. Now segment skew to segment NK. Where is segment NK? That would be right here. So segment skew to this would be segments that are on different planes and would never intersect with segment NK, even if they went on forever. So we can kick this off with segment JM. Segment JM is skew to segment NK because they're on different planes and they would never intersect even if you continued them on forever. Same thing with segment OM. Segment OM is skew to segment NK because they lie on different planes and they will never intersect even if they continue on forever. Same thing with segment LM. Segment LM is skew to segment NK because even if they went on in both directions forever, they would never intersect and they're on separate planes. Those would be the segments that are skewed to segment NK. Lastly, we're looking for segments that intersect segment KL. Now, segments that intersect segment KL, which is right here, would just be segments that share an endpoint with segment KL. So that would be segment NK that intersects segment KL at point K. Segment JK intersects segment KL at point K. Segment OL intersects segment KL at point L. And segment ML intersects segment KL at point L. Those would be all the segments that intersect segment KL. Now example two says use the figure below to find the following. So we're looking for all corresponding angles. So remember, corresponding angles would be non-adjacent angles. They're not right next to each other. That lie on the same side of the transversal and they're on the same side of the two lines. So angle five would be a corresponding angle with angle eight. Angle seven would be a corresponding angle with angle four. Angle six would be a corresponding angle with angle three. And then angle two would be a corresponding angle with angle one. Those would be all your sets of corresponding angles in this figure because they all lie on the same side of the transversal and the same side of the two lines. Next, we're going to name all the alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles means that they are not adjacent. They can't be right next to each other. Alternate means they're on opposite sides of the transversal. And interior means they're on the inside of the two lines. So we can start with angles 7 and 3. Those would be alternate interior angles. Angles 2 and 8 would also be alternate interior angles because they're on opposite sides of the transversal. That's the alternate. And interior means they're on the inside of the two lines. Next, all consecutive interior angles. So consecutive interior angles, consecutive, also same side interior angles, just means they're on the same side of the transversal and they're both inside the two lines. That's the consecutive and the interior. So those would be angles seven and eight. Those would be two consecutive interior angles and angles two and three. Those would be two consecutive or same side interior angles because they're on the same side of the transversal 
and they're inside the two lines. Lastly, we want alternate exterior angles. So alternate exterior angles means they're on the opposite side of the transversal because that's alternate. And then exterior means on the outside of the two lines. So those would be angles five and one. Those would be alternate exterior angles and angles six and four. Those would be outside the two lines and they're on opposite sides of the transversal, alternate exterior angles. Example three says escalators consist of steps on a continuous loop that is driven by a motor. At the top and bottom of the platform, these steps collapse to provide a level surface for entrance and exit. So part A says, what is the relationship between the treads of the ascending stairs? So if we look at the treads of the ascending stairs, so these are the ascending stairs, you're going up the escalator right here. If you're looking at these treads, you could think about them as planes, right? So these planes, if we continued those on forever, would actually be parallel planes because they would never intersect with one another. So technically, the treads of the ascending stairs, we could about as parallel planes. Part B says, what is the relationship between the treads of the two steps at the top of the incline? So the two steps at the top of the incline would be these two steps right here. Well, it looks like they're right in line with each other, right? So they would connect perfectly with one another. They would run right into each other. Therefore, they're technically coplanar. They exist on the same plane. They are the same plane. So those two steps would be coplanar. Lastly, would be how do the treads of the steps on the incline of the escalator relate to the treads on the steps of the bottom of the escalator? Well, if you look over here, the treads on the incline look to be horizontal, whereas the treads on the bottom of the escalator look like they are slanted a little bit downward, meaning that they are on separate planes and they are not parallel to one another. Therefore, you could say that these treads would be skew to one another. If your answer was that the steps on the incline, if they went on forever and the steps underneath the escalator went on forever, they would technically intersect. That's okay. I would accept that these would be intersecting planes if you wanted to say that as well, because technically if they went on forever, they would eventually intersect. But because they are finite planes, we can say that they are skewed to one another.